This is Josiah Plays, the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. Alright, we're back here. We just defeated the five skeletons. We're almost dead. You step over the bones on the floor to take a closer look at the boathouse. You pick up and study a few of the tools scattered around. Hammers, nails, chisels, and the like, but they appear very ordinary. You hear a banging sound coming from beyond the north door and have time for one further search before you must react. Alright, well, first of all... Use a couple provisions. Let's look through the drawers and benches. The drawers are all full of nails, tacks, and miscellaneous bits and pieces. In one drawer, you find a handful of gold pieces, which you take. Five gold pieces. As you do, you begin to hear a noise from the north door. You would best leave before you're caught. Alright. Let's go to this mono structure to the northeast, where we will go in and meet Oriana. There's Oriana. My player knows sir? What is that supposed to mean? We know about this. We know about this. Mm, I don't want to sell any of that. Let's buy. How much money do I have? 59 gold. Mm. Buy some provisions. There we go. Man, I hope I get to a bench soon because I have done a ton of stuff since the last bench. Huge structure to the north it is. We're not going to that tower. That tower is fucking doom incarnate. That tower is not a happy place. We're going to climb the foreboding stone staircase in front of us. You follow the steps leading up into the looming building. Looking upwards, you occasionally see golden glints on the ceiling. You wonder if there is a gold vein running through the ceiling of the cavern. The golden glints begin to disappear, followed by a high-pitched shrieking and the heavy sound of leathery wings. I'm going to eat another provision right now. That wasn't gold, but bat's eyes! The giant bats swarm down towards you, ready to attack. Alright, this is gonna be rude. I think they attack Diag. But I'm honestly not sure. They attack Diag. Did that one attack straight on? I don't think so. Oh, now I got myself in a position. Poison strike hits no one. Got him. Oh, I thought he was going to move that other way. 
This time I'm gonna guess he moves this way. Nope, I'm wrong. Now he has to move there. What? He attacked straight on? They never attack straight on! Wow, that was weird. We defeated the giant bats. With the giant bats slain, you consciously continue up the stairs. Thankfully, there are no more creatures lurking in the darkness and you reach the top safely. Surrounding you is an eerie graveyard. There are gravestones littered about and trees made from stone cast ominous shadows across the ground. A skull leers at you from an archway. It appears to be the entrance to a crumbling bridge of stairs that traverses a large pit, glowing with an ethereal blue light. Wow. This seems serious. The feeling of death and decay surrounds you, and you sense that this place is one of an arcane ancient evil. I guess we'd better explore the graveyard. You hunt around the gravestones and behind the stone trees. Test your luck. Come on, luck test. Let's do this. Made it. Got it. You find something. Tucked behind one of the gravestones is a red flask. You have found a potion of strength. Pleased with your find, you once again stand before the leering skull. What does the potion of strength do, I wonder? I wonder what it does. Well, we're gonna climb the bridge of stairs. You begin to cross the vast dark void using the ominous bridge. Swirling around below you in the depths of the void are the trapped souls of the dead. The souls begin to rise before bursting suddenly forth from the void, encompassing the bridge. Their wails fill your ears and you look on in horror as some of the shapes materialize in front of you. Uh-oh. You have disturbed our rest, one of the ghosts whispers. Now you must join us in our eternal slumber. Oh great, I gotta fight some ghosts. Oh shit, this looks like it's going to be serious. This looks like it's going to be serious. You need to poison, of course. about to start getting wrecked. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna fucking die here. I don't have a chance. I'm in trouble. I'm in big, big trouble. Oh, uh, Poison Strike's gonna be immune, too. This one's gonna hit me here, this one's gonna... I don't have a lot I can do here to not get killed. Potion of strength. No, I can't use shit. Come on. 
Kill this one. Oh, I might make this. I might still make this. Oh, I should have noticed he was attacking there, not... Oh, I should... That was dumb. Oh my god, I can't believe I won that fight. That was so hard. I thought I was dead for sure. You're a triumphant. You lost 8 stamina, gained 20 souls. The ghosts slowly sink back into the depths of the swirling void. One of them remains and addresses you. You have proven your worth, Lunica Ikadi of Ikad. Enter the domain of the dead at your peril. The Lord of the Undead will not be as kind as we would have been. How do they know my name? Maybe Zagorn knows I'm coming. The last spirit sinks through the floor and joins the others back in the gloom below. Can you climb in the bridge? Alright, hold on. Let's use some more provisions. <coughs> <coughs> A tall, carved archway looms ahead of you. To either side and above, rows of black windows face the gloom of the cavern. Out of the corner of your eye, you see faces staring out at you from the darkness, only to then disappear when you turn to face them. Bravely, you step through the imposing entrance and make your way inside. Enter the Domain of the Dead. I'm scared. You reach the end of the path. A strange stone pillar decorated with monstrous bones supports the room. There are paths leading to the left and right, and a wooden ladder to the left of the stone pillar leads upwards. Uh, I think I'm going to climb the ladder and see where that takes me. Oh, this is cool. Climb the ladder, which leads to a trap door. You give it a heave, clamber through, then hear it slam down behind you. The room is about eight meters square, with another ladder on the far wall. Standing motionless in the center of the room are four men. At least, they appear to be men. Their skin is a greeny-gray color. Their clothes are tattered and torn, and they are all staring vacantly at the ceiling. One carries a club, one a scythe, one an axe, and one a pick. They are ignoring you completely. These are most likely zombies from the stories I've heard about the undead. Oh, there they are. Wow. Those are pretty crazy looking. That's a cool illustration. Pick, axe, scythe, club. I don't know what's going on back there with sword and shield guy, but... Around the room are various peasant-style weapons, such as pick forks, axe handles, and pointed sticks. Several barrels are scattered around the room, and there is another ladder in the far, far corner. In the northeast corner is a human corpse with a sword in one hand and a shield in the other. The strange creatures in the center of the room have stopped looking vacantly and are now focusing on you. Um... Try to talk to them, you never know. Their vocabulary is limited to a series of moans and groans. They appear not to be intelligent at all. Furthermore, your conversation merely serves to attract their attention to you. They grip their weapons, and it looks as though you will have to fight them. However, there is a slim chance that you could scramble back to the trapdoor. The one that I came in? Alright, let's try. The four men stir into action and shamble towards you, their weapons ready. You start to scramble back to the trapdoor, but you do not know if you can make it. Your foot slips on a loose pebble and you fall to the ground. Before you can regain your footing, the creatures are upon you. Uh-oh. The zombies shuffle towards you slowly but relentlessly. Their vacant eyes suggest that their actions are controlled by a will which is not their own. You must act quickly. The first zombie reaches you and prepares to swing his club. 
This is going to be unpleasant, I have a feeling. They're probably immune to poison, aren't they? They're not immune to poison. they attack diagonally. They have seven skill. Damn. Come on, win the clash. No, that's a terrible roll. Wow, they hit hard too. This is terrible. I'm gonna die. I know I said that last time, but this time I feel like it's really, really true. Maybe I got this. Maybe I got this. I got this. Lost three stamina. Gained 20 souls. Beat of the zombies. The poor wretch is lying dead at your feet. Almost look happy to be relieved of the burden of life. But as you look down at them, you sense that you are not the only one to know of their deaths. Plus two luck. Wow. Let's investigate the weapons lying around. You find nothing remarkable about the weapons. In fact, not a single weapon looks more useful than your own. As you search the debris, you, fear, you hear a deep thumping from the north, followed by a scream which sends a shiver down your spine. Apparently all I can do now is climb the ladder. Is there a bench up here? Come on, how about a bench? I need a bench. You have entered a large circular chamber. The most striking feature here is a large stone bowl. It is filled with a dark, rich, red liquid, which is bubbling vigorously. Aside from this mysterious looking pool, there is also a spiral staircase set behind the pool and two doorways opposite each other. I suddenly feel the urge to drink from this pool. Fuck it, I'll drink from the pool. What happens? You dip one of your hands in the sticky, warm liquid and raise it to your lips. As you do, you realize that you're holding a handful of blood. Nonetheless, you decide to take a drink. You gag as the vile liquid goes down your throat and fall to your knees. Your head spins and nausea overwhelms you. Your foolish actions have damned you with a blood curse. You do not know what effects it will have, but you suspect that you will soon find out. A, B, positively refresh, refreshing. Quaff an interesting drink. Got an achievement for drinking the blood. Alright. That's probably bad. That's probably not good. I love the way this is... The way this is doing its thing. Where each la layer is like pulling out the... The front of the mansion so that you can see the room inside. You climb the stairs and find yourself in a dark crypt of some kind. At one end is an altar, and various coffins are strewn about the room. Ooh, cool. Coffin room. Nice illustration. There is an opening in the wall through to another room on your left. Let's investigate the room. The silence is deathly. A slow drip startles you as you creep around the coffins. The altar is ornately carved and studded with jewels. Beautifully woven drapes hang from the walls, although they are threadbare in places. There are three coffins in the room. Light from your lantern falls on the largest coffin, which is open. You can hear a very gentle snoring coming from the open coffin. It seems that someone, or something, is sleeping inside. 
That altar and those drapes are beautiful. What a waste to have them stuck down here. What do you do? I'm gonna... What am I doing? I'm gonna walk quietly towards the coffin. Cautiously, you prepare to creep towards the coffin and the source of the snoring. As you approach, ghostly figures rise from the ground and begin to drift around the room. No, not more ghosts. Test my luck. No. Oh, I got it, because my luck was maxed. You reach the coffin and peer cautiously into it. The creature you are facing is a vampire. You have various lines of attack. You may attack him directly, but this will prove difficult. A crucifix will hold him at bay, but will not kill him. If you are determined to kill the vampire, you must overpower him and drive a wooden stake through his heart. I don't have a crucifix or a stake. What if I just talk to the friendly vampire? You lean over into the coffin, shake the vampire, and wake it. <laughs> Excuse me, you ask. Do you know the whereabouts of Zagor? Its eyes instantly f Oh, shit, it just killed me. Its eyes instantly flick open and it hisses at you. I do, but you shall never see him. It pulls you into the coffin with its vice-like grip. Your last living memory is a flash of pain as his sharp teeth sink into your neck. You should never have decided to wake a sleeping vampire. Your adventure ends here. Resurrection. Oh my god, I'm so far back here. So far back here. Oh my god. I gotta do so much stuff again. fight first. So they can attack diagonally or... Win the clash, come on. That's not a good roll, but I won anyway. Clash win. Uh, that went much better than last time, actually. What do you want? I want to ask about the amulet. I'll take the vials. I'll leave. I'll go in here and talk to the air lady. Bull amulet. Give her the bull amulet. Wear the ring. Open the door. Osbin. Fight the salamanders. That's a terrible roll! Oh man. I'm in trouble. go around this fire pit in the center and whittle them down this way. Oh, 
I went back that way. stamina he gives me the amulet I leave bad things happen to me I go end up in the water Gives me water breathing, I'm fine. Alright, honestly, there's no reason. Alright, we're not gonna fight the werewolf this time. We're not gonna piss him off. We're gonna go through the door. We're going to wake up the old man tell him his boots are undone now he likes me i'm not gonna tell him that i'm on a quest i'm just gonna oh that was completely pointless we're not gonna go to the skeleton room because all i got out of there was five gold for fighting all those skeletons it wasn't worth it i'm gonna go to the northeast about the domain of the dead. I'll ask about the warlock's treasure. Get a couple more provisions. Structure to the north. We could try the tower again. No, the tower is bad. Oh, yeah, I gotta fight the bats again. I forgot about the bats. Pretty sure they only attack Diag. Except I'm fucking completely fucking wrong. Ah! Come on. Come on. There you go. Got it. Down to 11. Oh, I gotta fight those fucking ghosts again. I got the potion of strength again. 
Fuck it, let's drink it and see what it does. I have no idea what it did. Oh, it f filled me back up to max stamina. I wonder if I just completely wasted that. Like, if it could have healed me way more points than that. These ghosts are no joke. with this one. They have nine skill? Damn. No! Oh, God! Oh, can't believe I did that. I wasted my turn and I got hit. Let's go left this time instead of climbing the ladder. There is a tense feeling in the air as you enter this room. Grim looking armored skeletons stand guard near a set of stairs leading upwards. The room itself is littered with bones and skulls. Suddenly the skeleton guards stationed by the stairs shudder to life. Eh, you can't just clop around our stairs any way you please. Look at their boots! Disgraceful! Who knows where they've been traipsing? Is that mud? It's mud, isn't it? Attack! Skeleton guards. Two of them. They have shields. But they don't have spears, so they're not going to be doing that attacking from two away bullshit. Oh, they do cleaves. Damn it. I think I'm about to be in trouble. Maybe not. Clash. Come on, win the clash. Oh, I'm getting wrecked. Oh, I won! You defeated the skeleton guards. You strike the skeleton guards with a final blow, and they shatter into bony pieces which scatter across the stone floor. Whatever magic was animating these creatures has now been dispelled. I have a lot of provisions. Wondering what they were guarding, you proceed up the stone steps. Bouncing up some steps. Bouncing up some more steps. Oh shit, this looks like an intimidating room. You enter a large, sinister chamber. Even the chamber itself is sinister. That has a large sculpted mural placed on the wall. 
The skeletal warriors on display writhe and contort, and it feels as if the wall is alive. The air is thick with a sense of dread, and the room is dank and dreary. Candlesticks light the way through. This is a place of pure evil. I don't want to stay here. We will decide if you are worthy of our aid, adventurer. Experience the ordeal of fear! Suddenly, for no apparent reason, you feel afraid. Very afraid. Skill test. Come on. It's got this. Do this. No! I failed! You were terrified. Despite being more afraid than you have ever felt before, you concentrate hard. In your mind's eye, you see a shining light and focus on it. But alas, the light vanishes, swallowed up by the darkness of fear. You break out into a cold sweat and your heart begins to beat faster and faster. The sheer terror is horrifying. Then, the fear vanishes. Feeble-minded fool! Chides a ghostly voice. You shall need to steal your nerve more than that to make it through the horrors found within the domain of the dead. Minus one skill. Terrified you leave the room. Well, that sucked. Ah, here's the room with the... I'm not gonna drink the blood this time. That leads up to the vampires. Let's see what's over here. You enter a large room. Various bits of wooden debris are strewn untidily across the floor. A prominent set of steps lead upwards at the rear of the room, and there are some steps leading down. The room is deathly silent, and neither exit provide clues on where you should go next. In one corner is a crude wooden desk with a box on it. Nearby is a wooden bench, suitable- Oh, a resting bench! Yes! Rest on the bench. Rest on the bench. Oh, thank goodness. Investigate the box. You approach the desk and open the box. There are some gold pieces within the box, which you take. A lot of gold pieces. What if I go down the steps? Oh shit. As you make your way to the top of the steps, a hideous looking man-sized creature with warty skin, wild hair, and long claws for fingernails charges up towards you. Some kind of ghoul? A white. You face a powerful adversary. A white. This creature is large, strong, and evil. Sh silver arrow time. Taking careful aim, your bow and arrow gleam in the light. You let go of the string and your aim is true. The silver arrow skewers the white, and with a shriek, it crumples in a heap. As you stand over the white's lifeless form, you suddenly hear a commotion from down the steps. Strange lights and sounds emanate from the darkness, and you are suddenly frozen with a strange fear. You do not want to linger too long in this space and make your way directly to the steps that lead upwards. Alright, I guess we can't go down. Bouncing up the stairs. Bouncing up the stairs. Oh, this does not look good. This looks super bad. Reaching the top of the steps, you enter into a musty burial chamber. Tombs line the chamber, giving an intense sense of claustrophobia, and there are strange carved faces on the wall, whose eyes seem to follow you around the room. Etched into the wall is the word, Zagor. To the north are more steps that lead upwards. To one side of the chamber, there is an ancient, dusty book on a stone plinth. Zagor's family must be entombed in here. I am not sure I like it in here. Suddenly you feel a rumbling, which becomes a violent shaking. Bursting through the rock are grotesque, reanimated giant worms. Parts of their flesh have decayed, and they have a gray, sickly skin. They are crypt worms, revived to protect the resting place of Zagor's ancestors. Great. Crypt worms. Draw your weapon and prepare to fight. That's all I can do. They look scary. They look like they're gonna hit me from far away. They're gonna shoot shit at me. They're gonna spit poison and acid and all kinds of cray at me. I don't. I don't like it. Let's 
see if they're immune to poison. Last time. I rolled pretty... Oh, you rolled better. Grab and pull. Rude. They have eight skills, same as me. It's fucking terrible. These guys have a lot of different types of attacks. This is not good. hurting me. It's hurting me bad. Oh no. Oh no. Wow. This is fucking rough. I need to get one of these fuckers off the board. Please die. I'm down to seven stamina. I need to win this clash. There we go. Oh no! I had two fives and it rolled over to a one and made me lose the clash. That sucks. Oh, that sucks. I need to win this clash. Alright, cool. I might survive this now. I might survive this now. That was a stupid, stupid, stupid. I should have attacked right there. I know I should have attacked right there. Oh my god, I won. Oh my god, I can't believe it. I lost 12 stamina. Gained 15 souls. You've defeated the Crypt Worms. With an eerie moan, the crypt worms cease moving and fall to the ground with an earth-shattering crash. You put your weapon away and decide what to do next. You could either examine the book or leave before you may encounter some other creature. Well, first thing we're gonna do is eat a couple provisions. We're gonna read the book. You approach the book and brush the dust off the cover. It reads, those who would challenge Zagor. You open the book and read the first page. Inside these pages are the names of those foolish enough to challenge Zagor. All have failed. None shall defeat the ruler of Firetop Mountain. So many names. I guess we should all be thankful for their contribution to a heroic cause. I'll read the list of names. Wow. Oh, these are Kickstarter backers. Alright, cool. You enter another chamber. This one seems rather plain, but your keen eye does notice the scorch marks on the floor. Suddenly there is a spark, followed by an intense pillar of fire. It burns brighter and brighter, emitting an intense howl from deep inside it. The flames begin to dissipate, and standing in their place is a terrifying hellhound. It snarls at you menacingly with its jet black fangs bared before leaping at you to strike. Alright, let's fight that hellhound. What's up, Hellhound? It's gonna shoot fire at me from a distance, probably. Yep. 
Oh, hell no. I wasn't expecting that kind of attack pattern. It's terrible. This is really bad. I'm burning. I failed to poison him. I need to win this. And I rolled terrible. Oh, but he rolled terrible. Come on, we're just gonna... Come on. Good roll, good roll. I'm getting him. Now he's gonna move there, and we're gonna kill him. Nice. Lost four stamina, gained five souls. You've defeated the Hellhound. With a monstrous roar, the demonic hound slumps to the ground, dead. Seconds later, its body turns gray and becomes ash, which scatters to the wind, blowing in the room. You search the area, but unsurprisingly find nothing of value. You decide to continue on quickly in case something else appears. Let's eat another provision. Ooh, that looks like an important room. Let's continue up the steps. The narrow staircase is cut into the rock, and there are about 20 steps leading up. At the top of the steps, a passageway leads you into a large open chamber. This chamber stinks of putrefying flesh. The smell is so bad that you are tempted to turn back. Three bodies lie in the chamber. You may either search the bodies or tiptoe quietly through the room. I don't want to tarry in this place any longer than I have to. I don't want to search the bodies. And yet, I'm going to. Search the first body. You find a handful of gold pieces in the pockets of the corpse. Plus five gold pieces. Search the second body. I'm going to get myself in trouble here. As you move over towards the second body, you accidentally kick the third corpse on the floor. Its eyes flick open and it quickly gets up and slashes at you with its long, sharp fingernails. The creature now standing before you is a semi-decayed creature. Its quick eyes dart from side to side, watching you. Oh shit, look at that. That's a hell of an illustration. That is a hell of a death zombie. Ghouls. Okay, now we got ghouls. Its long tongue flashes out with a hissing noise. Its teeth and nails are sharp, and it doesn't seem to be afraid of your weapon. Another one of the corpses rises to join it. They are ghouls! We gotta fight some ghouls, apparently. Oh, they look... they look scary. They look scary. They look scarier than those zombies I fought earlier. Well, I'm gonna move here and hope they're not attacking Diag. Flash, come on, roll high. That one should die of poison in a second. Got him. Got him again. Got him again. They're not very smart. Not so bad, not so bad. Lost no stamina, gained ten souls, defeated the ghouls. The ghoul twitches and dies at your feet. You search its body and find little of interest. A couple of earrings are in one of its pockets. Plus two luck. I'll take the earrings. You take the dull metal earrings and try to rub off some of the grime. Then you put them in your pack. I just randomly got some earrings. I got cheese still. Search the second body, why not? You search the pockets of the other body and find some gold pieces and a bottle of liquid. You quickly pocket the gold pieces. 
Fuck it, let's drink some of this. The liquid is smooth and watery, and as you drink it, you begin to glow. You feel euphoric and a little drunk at the same time. Your confidence grows and your weariness disappears. The, body can, the bottle contains holy water, blessed by the overpriest of Cain Ma. It has restored your stamina to full strength. In addition to this, your skill is restored to its initial value. Wow, that stuff is amazing. And plus four luck. Wow. Wow. That would really hook you up. If you were down a bunch of luck and skill and stamina, that would basically res fucking set you, set you straight. You leave the chamber, walk down a short passage, and reach a staircase going up. Here we go. Well, there's a bench over there, but I don't even need a bench right now. I'm at full. At the top of the stairs, the passage turns sharply to the east. As you pause to get your bearings, you hear a creaking in the rock behind you. You spin around in time to see a heavy portcullis drop to seal off the passageway behind you. Bench. Following the path forward, you discover a bench where you're able to rest. A set of stairs lead upward, and a strange light can be seen coming from up the corridor. Well, we're going to sit on the bench so that we can save our game, essentially. And now, we will follow the stairs upward into a very cool looking room. And I think right here is a good place to go ahead and end this episode. So, if I exit and return to main menu, so now if I hit resume game, yeah, it just puts me right back here. Okay. So that's going to do it for this one. In the next one, we'll see what's in that big fancy room. Thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. <laughs>